ヒューマン人間その,その起源を探るというシリーズがこれから始まりますでこの課題はですね In search of the roots of humankind. This topic is indeed a very old proposition. In the middle 19th century, the Englishman Thomas Huxley wrote an influential book entitled Man's Place in Nature. Exactly 100 years later, around 1960, research into the ecology and social behavior of wild primates began to flourish. In this series, Through a wide variety of visual images, we would like to explore and discuss the roots of humanity. In part one of this series, we will look at the earliest primates, the prosimians. I think it can be said that detailed research on this group of primates has only just begun. このシリーズを進めていきたいと思っております。第一回目としましては、えー、レチュリーの中で一番あの原始的なまあ原猿類を扱います。で、まあこの原猿類の研究は、えー、最近になってあのやっとまあ蝶についたあの対象だと言っていいかと思いますが、えー、京都大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の大学の At the same time, I would also like to introduce to you another 16 of the approximately 32 prosimians, or so called living fossils, found on the island of Madagascar. Madagascar lies in the Indian Ocean. Around 400 kilometers off the African continent. It is approximately 1.6 times the size of Japan. Bordered by the central plateau running along the east coast, the tropical rainforest stretches out from north to south. In many regions, it is common to get more than 3,500 millimeters of rainfall annually. Madagascar is known for its peculiar flora and fauna. Nearly 80% of the flora is indigenous to the island. On the other hand, much of the region lying west of the central plateau is quite dry. The average annual rainfall here is only 500 milliliters, or one seventh that of the east. The land is rocky and composed largely of laterite soils. The plants in this region are well adapted to arid conditions and have evolved a unique process of development to assure their survival. In order to prevent excessive evaporation of water, some species have developed thick, fleshy leaves, while others have leaves attached directly on the trunk without branches. This is a baobab. There are seven species on Madagascar, all unique to the island. The origins and uniqueness of this island are evidenced in the peculiar geography of Ankarana in the north. Eroded away by wind and rain, this jagged terrain is some of the oldest on earth, originating from the pre Cambrian period. Thus, Madagascar is one of the oldest land masses in the world today. The reasons for the distinct geography. Flora and fauna of Madagascar can be found in the history of this island. Roughly 180 million years ago, the ancient continent Gondwana began to split apart. 
160 million years ago, Madagascar separated from Africa. From that point onward, disconnected from any other landmass, effectively isolated from the rest of the world, all life on this island followed its own unique pathway of evolution. This is Berenti, located approximately 700 kilometers south of the capital, Antananarivo. The average annual rainfall is only 600 millimeters, but the Mandare ri River flows year-round. The Berenti Forest, 250 hectares in size, is a protected wildlife sanctuary. Professor Naoki Koyama of Kyoto University first came here for preliminary research in 1981. Since 1989, he has returned every year to conduct research on the Berenti Persimians. Koyama's main research is focused on the ring-tailed lemur. Ring-tailed lemurs are diurnal, that is, they are most active during the day. There are approximately 300 individuals living in this forest. These lemurs live in troops. Troop size varies, but a group will range from 14 to 16 individuals, including males, females, and infants. Koyama's research area is 14.2 hectares and includes five troops. Each troop has a home range of roughly four to eight hectares, so troops come into contact with each other quite frequently. Occasionally, territorial fights occur. Koyama is mainly investigating the population dynamics and social relationships of these troops. For this purpose, identification of each individual is crucial. Recorded in his field notebooks are behavioral data on identified individuals. One quite interesting point known about ring-tailed lemurs is the fact that they have a female dominant society. One plausible reason for this is the fact that male and female body size is roughly the same. At this artificial watering hole, it is readily apparent that females are dominant. A mother infant group arrives. Thereafter, a male of the same group arrives. None of the females are the least bit bothered. Koyama writes down the dominance interactions between individuals as they occur. He waits for the females to leave. Then, hesitantly, he begins to drink. One female arrives late and the male moves away.
マダガスカルのワオキツンザルにまあ興味を持ったのは実はリマビヒビアという本に。My interest in Madagascar's ring-tailed lemurs was first ignited by the book Lemur Behavior, written by Alison Jolly. In the book, it said that unlike Japanese monkeys, females were dominant over males. I myself had studied the Arashiyama monkeys and, in particular, had investigated dominance relationships. So I was quite surprised. To find that there was a primate species whose females were actually dominant over males. The order of primates is divided into two groups the Persimians and Simians. The Persimians are largely divided into three groups the lemurs. Lorises and Tarsids. The lemurs display a wide range of adaptability and have undergone great speciation. In the world today, there are 236 species of primates. 13%, that is 32 species, can be found on Madagascar. At the genus level, 25%. Or 14 of the world's 57 genera are found here. It is quite unique that all of these species of persimians are lemurs. As you can see, the lemurs of Madagascar are indeed an intriguing and diverse group of primates. The 12 centimeter long gray mouse lemur is nocturnal. Subsisting mainly on insects, this creature makes its nest in dense bush or the holes of trees. The nocturnal brown mouse lemur is the world's smallest known primate species at 10 centimeters in length. The greater dwarf lemur found in the tropical rainforest is a very unusual primate. This creature hibernates for part of the year, surviving off fat stored at the base of its tail. The gray gentle lemur lives only in the bamboo forest, subsisting mainly on bamboo shoots. The golden gentle lemur was first discovered in 1986. It too is found only in the bamboo forest. The ring tailed lemur lives in the drier regions of Madagascar but avoids wide open spaces. The brown lemur closely resembles the ring tailed lemur. Except for the absence of rings on its tail, it emits a distinctive cry. The red bellied lemur lives deep within the tropical rainforest. Untold by its plump appearance, this creature is very quick and agile. The fur is a bright red. The ruffed lemur is easily distinguished by its contrasting black and white coloration. An adult weighs about four kilograms. The weasel sportive lemur is a leaf eater. There are seven species on Madagascar. The smallest of this group, the white footed weasel lemur, Is found in arid areas. The eastern woolly lemur, or eastern avahi, as its name suggests, is noted for its thick fur. The smallest of the indrids, it weighs about one kilogram. Veru's sifaka lives in the forests of arid areas. It is rather humorous to see one traveling on the ground.
The diademed sifaka is a black and white sifaka which lives in the tropical rainforest. The largest of the prosimians, Indri, emit a characteristically loud call. They weigh approximately seven kilograms. This unmistakable representative of the Madagascar prosimians, the Ai, is a nocturnal primate found in the tropical rainforest. At maturity, it weighs roughly three kilograms. Morning comes to the Berenti forest. The ring-tailed lemurs are the first to begin their activities of the day up in the trees where they spent the previous night. Catching the warmth of the morning sun they sit like resting sumo wrestlers with arms and legs spread out wide. And so begins another day in the life of the ring-tailed lemur. After warming up, they begin to feed in the trees. Their diet changes with the season, preferring the leaves, fruits, and young buds each has to offer. In particular, they prefer large fruiting trees. There are said to be 179 plant species at Berenti. The ring-tailed lemurs have been recorded to eat 54 of these. This thorny trunk tree is a member of the legume family. At night, ring-tailed lemurs can be found in almost every bonono or kili tree in the area. After feeding, the group comes down to the ground. Among the prosimians, this species is noted to be the most terrestrial. They spend a fairly long time on the ground during the day. This is a female ring-tailed lemur. Let's take a look at some physical characteristics of the species. Note the characteristic dog-like face and wet nose. Ring-tailed lemurs have a very acute sense of smell. The prosimians possess a number of primitive characteristics not found in other primates. One of the characteristics is a light-enhancing, light-reflective retina. The hands and feet are also re rather primitive. The ring-tailed lemur still has hooked claws on its hind feet.
Watching these lemur in the forest, one can observe a very peculiar behavior. This one is rubbing its wrists on a tree. Here, rubbing both wrists on its stomach, then grabbing onto a tree, it shakes the trunk. Here we see it again. This behavior is frequently performed by troop males. The ring-tailed lemur has scent glands on both wrists. Females also have scent glands, but males have bigger glands and a stronger scent. The behavior is called scent marking. It is used to mark and recognize territorial boundaries. Scent marking is most commonly performed along the boundaries between two troop territories. This slender, defigured trunk is the outcome of scent marking. These scent mark trees, used to display one's territory, are lined up right along the border area. On the other hand, females rub their genitals on trees as a way of scent marking. Because the sense of smell is so well developed in ring-tailed lemurs, Koyama thinks that scent marking goes beyond functioning just as a territorial marker, but may also be used for communicating among troop members. When one female puts a scent gland over a previously marked spot, it is called endorsement. The meaning of this behavior, however, is not yet clearly understood. <coughs> Communication is thought to occur by scent, touch, sight, and sound. They have more than 10 vocalizations in their repertoire.
Koyama has been following the changes of this group since 1989. Koyama describes for us troop structure and explains the process of troop fission as he has observed it at Berenti. This table presents demographic information from his six years of extensive research on ringtail lemurs between 1989 and 1995. In the beginning, within this 14.2 hectare study site, there were 63 individuals over the age of one and ten infants. During these six years, 139 were born. 77 immigrated in, into the area from outside, 80 died, and 109 left the area. In 1995, there were 72 individuals over the age of one. 18 were infants. In 1989, this figure shows the population changes by year for the ring-tailed lemurs between 1989 and 1995. As previously mentioned, in the beginning, the entire population contained 63 individuals. In the last six years, the population has slowly increased in size. In 1989, this was the location of A Troop, B Troop, C Troop, and D Troop. When I restarted the investigation, C Troop had 10 adult females, but shortly thereafter, the troop fissioned into two groups, C1 and C2. Five females moved into each of these two troops. In and around the same area, troop fission or the expulsion of a particular female occurred nine times. Looking at group size, one can see that fission occurs when the number of females in a group grows to more than five. It most often occurred when the number of females reached eight to nine. After fissioning occurred, the number of females in any given troop decreased. When the number of females in a group increases, conflicts among them occur more easily. In this way, fissioning or eviction of females regulates troop size. This frequently splitting up of groups, I think, is an important characteristic of ring-tailed lemurs. For my next topic of research, I would like to know what the role of the male is within the female-dominated society of ring-tailed lemurs. I want to investigate this topic from various levels. It is easy enough to investigate mother-offspring relationships, 
But in order to understand father offspring relationships, one must have the cooperation of geneticists and biochemists. Following this cooperative line of research, I am most interested in learning about the reproductive roles of males. Calculated into reproductive success, I am interested in learning what kind of reproductive behavior these males exhibit towards the dominant sex and what kinds of males sire the greatest number of offspring. The tropical rainforest and arid regions, which make up the environmentally diverse nature of Madagascar, have worked to steer these prosimians along a very unique evolutionary pathway. The Madagascar prosimians can be divided into various groups. Regarding temporal activity patterns, they are either nocturnal, diurnal, or crepuscular. Habitat preferences range from tropical rainforest to arid areas. As for social lifestyle, we can find species living in male-female pairs, in troops, and as solitaries. The ayai is the sole representative of its family and genus. Individuals of this species live in solitude within the tropical rainforest. It was classified as a, a rodent at one time because its incisors continue to grow throughout life. The long slender object being poked into the fruit is actually its finger. The fruits of Canarium, a member of the Berseraceae family, is high in nutritional value. The nocturnal brown mouse lemur lives a solitary life in the tropical rainforest. At 50 grams, it is the world's smallest primate species. The greater dwarf lemur is also a solitary nocturnal resident of the tropical rainforest. Next among the group of nocturnal solitary living species are those living in arid regions. The gray mouse lemur builds its nest in the holes of trees, eating insects, fruits, and leaves. In the same group, the weasel sportive lemur eats only plants. All of these species are solitary living. There's one exception living in this forest. The eastern woolly lemur, or eastern avahi, too, is nocturnal and lives in the tropical rainforest. However, it lives in male-female pairs. Next is the group of cathimeral species living in pairs or sometimes in small groups in the tropical rainforest. The gray gentle lemur lives only in the dense bamboo forests, eating the plant's young shoots. The golden gentle lemur was first discovered in 1986, taking the entire world by surprise.
The next group are mainly diurnal, but sometimes become cathemeral and live in the tropical rainforest. The rough lemur lives in pairs in the tropical rainforest. When an indiri pair choruses, it stimulates other pairs to chorus too. The loud voice can reach a distance of two kilometers away. The last group are those diurnal species living in pairs or in groups in arid areas. Veruz sifaka is an excellent representative of this group. Unlike other types, they live sometimes in pairs, but other times in troops or larger groups. The diurnal ring-tailed lemur forms large troops in arid regions. With regards to the 32 species of lemur found on Madagascar, it is clear that nocturnal species tend to be solitary or pair living. Furthermore, cathemeral or diurnal species tend to live as pairs or in troops. Among all the mammals, only 3% living in pairs form family units. Among primates, the gibbons are a classical example of a pair-type society. As a matter of fact, among the Madagascar lemurs, the percent of species forming pairs is extremely high. This is one of their important characteristics. From this, a tendency of change from nocturnal to diurnal species, that is, from solitary to pair, and then troop living species, can be seen. From nocturnal to diurnal, solitary to pair living, and from the pair to a troop living style. I noted that there are 32 species of lemur on Madagascar, but in fact, another 17 species are already extinct. The existence of these remaining 32 species, too, are threatened. Primate, primate comes from the Latin word meaning prime, number one, or the highest one. However, humans are the only animals with such strength. The existence of all other creatures are put into jeopardy by our presence. The persimians are found only in areas of Southeast Asia to Africa and Madagascar. 
and live in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. In order to truly understand humankind, it is important not only to better understand the other primates, but to also understand the lifestyles of all living creatures. As shown, while the Persimians are indeed a very primitive group, I think you can now understand that they possess a very wide range of social systems. In particular, a diurnal activity pattern and a solitary lifestyle are only found among the Persimians. It is impossible to ignore the Persimians when thinking about the change to a diurnal group living existence. This particularly important event occurred within the evolution of Persimians. I would like to make one final point. We were able to see a wide variety of social structures. Each of these structures have been developed even further among the Simians. The very fact that we were able to see the budding beginnings of each type in Persimian society is of extreme interest. Only 50 species of our most ancient ancestors, the Persimians, are left in the world today. I believe that the more details we understand about the Persimians, the more we will begin to understand the depth of our own roots. え、